Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now the DA is gearing up for its national elective conference this weekend. Federal leader John Steenhuisen and Federal Council Chairperson Helen Zilla are seeking re-election in their prospective positions. But former Joburg Mayor Mpopaladzi is taking John Steenhuisen on. Let's now speak to the Congress's presiding officer, Greg Krumbach, just to give us more details around what's happening there. Thank you very much for speaking to us sir, here on ENCA. Uh, just firstly, just for clarity, in terms of a concern by a particular candidate by the name Mpopalazzi. She's expressed that she's concerned, uh, concerned rather by this, um, you know, uh, uh, te technological way of voting uh, in terms of people, uh, the DA saying that it will know who voted, but will not know who that person voted for. She says, how uh, do people who, delegates who are there to actually vote uh, at Congress this weekend, how do they know that this is true, that they won't be punished for choosing who they'd like? What's your response to that? Well, um, good afternoon and afternoon to all your viewers. I can assure every single delegate and indeed anybody watching your program right now, that we have a completely secret ballot. The open vote system that we use in our Congresses, we've had them at federal Congresses, we've had them at provincial Congresses, and even at caucus elections, including Johannesburg, has been used by our party now for three or four years. And we haven't once in all that time had a complaint about the secrecy of the ballot or any other um, problem that people might have attributed to Opervote. So we also have party agents with us, the, the candidates, in other words, who are represented by their agents, who will, who will be conducting oversight. We have two of our internal auditors here, and we've had a demonstration with all the candidates on Wednesday to prove to them, showing the entire process and the audit trail, that there is no way at all that you can trace the way the delegate voted to the fact that the delegate actually voted. And that we, we investigated before we moved into open vote to move into the 21st century. Um, when we used it three or four years ago for the first time, we did extensive investigations and we compared it to other systems. It is a system that is proven worldwide to be secure and secret, used by many, many political parties over the world and indeed organizations. So I think I can say to every single delegate, you can be rest assuring that your vote is secret. Mm. All right. Uh, coming to the fact that, uh, you know, all the candidates that will be vying for different positions tomorrow had to be vetted. They had to hand over certain uh, certificates of clarification and confirmation uh, to you. Um, you know, has this happened? Are you happy that everyone who's going to be on the ballot, uh, on the ballot paper or who will be reflecting on the ballot paper tomorrow has been vetted, that they're clear? We will not be hearing of another COPE, Dr. Maguarela, um, you know, issue. <laughs> well, yes. Um, so every candidate um, has to fill in a number of forms. Um, one of them, obviously, is a nomination form where they have to be nominated and seconded by members of the DA in good standing. They sign a declaration that they will abide by our rules of, of conduct for internal elections. And they have something called a certificate of good financial standing, which is a certificate issued by their province. Um, saying that they are not in arrears with any statutory obligations to the party, like candidate fees or tithes. So that's the vetting process that we do. And we don't shortlist anybody. Anybody can stand at a federal Congress for any position. And um, I believe that process has been very good for us over the years. We have a cutoff of nominations, which was on the 13th of March. And every candidate did successfully fill in those forms. Those ones that completed every form have gone forward. And that means we'll have a ballot paper on Sunday reflecting all those candidates. Mm. All right, let's talk about Lungile Penyani. At some point, uh, you know, when uh, I looked through um, your confirmed list of candidates in different positions, she was actually going head to head with uh, Helen Zilla for the federal council chair, but she's pulled out of that position. So can you confirm for us that uh, Helen Zilla goes into this Congress unopposed? Yes, that's exactly right. Um, Lungili Penyani withdrew from three positions. She informed us that she, in fact, was quite happy with the way those three positions have been handled in the past, and she would prefer then to contest for the deputies, which means that in this case, uh, Helen Zilla is unopposed, and she will be the chairperson of Federal Council of our party for the next three years.
Another debate is the overhaul of deployment positions in Parliament uh, that you'll be looking at in Congress this weekend. Uh, what more information can you tell South Africans around this and why uh, this will form part of the Congress, why it's so important to discuss that? Well, um, that's part of our raft of policies and resolutions that we will be discussing mainly on Sunday. But clearly Parliament isn't working the way it ought to work. And therefore we have put together some private members' bills and other suggestions to actually try and make Parliament more accountable to the, to the people of South Africa. So that is certainly part of our agenda for the weekend. And uh, indeed Van Horn, who's handling that particular aspect uh, for the media, would be able to elaborate on what I've said. Mm. Uh, any concern around a leader such as Helen Zilla going unopposed in this particular position? I know that they said Lungile uh, told you um, that she's pulling out because she believes in some of these positions candidates are doing a great job and that she doesn't have to form part of that. But, I mean, there was no one else besides Lungile who went against Helen Zilla anyway prior to her pulling out, if I'm not mistaken. Are you not concerned as the Democratic Alliance that it looks like no leader feels as though they can go up against uh, Ms. Zilla? Well, I think you're talking about one position, which is yeah. the chairperson of federal council. We, we yes. also, of course, have the federal leader position. There's two candidates there. We have the federal chairperson. There's three candidates there. We have eight I'm candidates for the deputy federal chairperson. I'm talking specifically about the position that Helen Ziller has been holding for the past yeah. few years. Yes, uh, you, you are, but you said, oh, am I not concerned? And I'm not concerned because all mm. the other positions are strongly contested. So I think what's happened in, in Helen's case is that I think there's a broad recognition across the party that she has stabilized the party. She's doing a lot of good work in, in reforming many um, aspects that needed some attention and that we are in fact in very safe hands. And I, I would imagine, and I, I can't speak for the delegates at Congress or for the party as a whole, that I think when somebody um, has turned a ship around, um, very often people say, well, please continue. And there's not a great deal of uh, interest to contest I'm that so position. Sorry I believe for that's what's mm. the case. I apologize for mm. interjecting there. Maybe just explain to South Africans who are not part of the structures internally in terms of what you're seeing by saying that she stabilized the party. Um, because South Africans would say that, for instance, uh, during the last local government elections, the DA didn't perform so well. You had to go into coalitions. FF Plus took some of your constituencies. Uh, you know, some of the coalition partnerships that you formed have deteriorated. They've, they, they haven't actually taken that long to actually be stable. So where has she stabilized the party? We've seen resignations, particularly after she came back into the party as federal council chair. Uh, many people started to resign and a breakaway was also formed. So maybe explain to us what you mean by her steering it in the, in the right direction. Some South Africans would say that's not what they see. Well, I think... The real judge is, is the voters themselves and the way they're going to vote next year and indeed how they have been voting since um, the election in 2019. So we didn't come out of the election in 2019 in the place that we really wanted to be. Mm. And it was necessary then to settle on our value set. We had a policy conference to do that. We, we then um, spelled out very clearly what we wanted for the country and in 2021 we did in fact have an increase on our 2019 result but since then the the party's clarity of vision and the way in which we've expressed what we want for our country has resonated with voters and so we're seeing in increasing numbers of by-elections that we're doing incredibly well in Inoking Bajima for example which is a entirely 100% black ward in rural eastern cape we got 38% of the vote very recently right. And the polls published by a report show us only 11% behind the ANC and rising. Even the ANC's own polling shows that. Research, mm. Urban Research Foundation says we have overtaken the ANC in urban areas. So when mm. I talk about stabilization, I'm talking about growing voter support reflected in by-elections and opinion polls because the party is more united and going forward in a way that the voters recognize. Mm. Well, thank you very much for speaking to us here on ENCA. Uh, Mr. Cromwell, thank you for your time. DA Congress Presiding Officer Greg Crombock speaking to us there. The DA going into his elective Congress this weekend.